Hey there, my good friends. John Michalidis here. It is Thursday, October 22nd, and it is day 206 of my pre-foreclosure investing challenge using the short sales riches system. Interesting week this week. Um, jumping on the phones, uh, talking to the banks myself. Still have my negotiators working with me. Taking much more of a hands-on approach, though. Moving forward on a couple of deals that we didn't think uh, were going anywhere. All of a sudden, they spring back to life. That's good. Actually have here um, an approval approval from the first. Um, we have to close on our before um, December 2nd. Uh, still don't have approval from the second uh, mortgage. And the second mortgage is Bank of America. And we're having trouble even getting them to respond to us. Uh, so we'll see what happens there. We've got till December 2nd to uh, get something worked out. Hopefully that'll happen. Also had an interesting thing. Have a letter here from the county of Sarasota regarding a property we have under contract. Apparently, when you're in Florida and with you, when you're in the coastal zone, uh, a lot of times they have uh, code ordinances, zoning ordinances, building codes that state that the ground floor can only be storage, idea being flood, can't have electrical down there, living space down there. Um, so anyway, we we get this letter saying uh, that uh, the downstairs of this property is uh, not up to code. Uh, the bathroom and the living area and the wet bar and the washer dryer and the bedroom have to be removed to bring it up to code. Well, the funny thing is, the current owners bought it that way. Nobody ever disclosed to them it wasn't up to code. It never came up. Turns out the three buyers prior to that bought it that way. It was converted to its current form exactly years ago, many sales ago, and nevertheless, here we are. So pros and cons. Obviously, um, we're going to have to uh, disclose this now, uh, and we're going to have to drastically reduce our price. At the same time, we're going to go back to the lender and say, look, we just discovered this, so you're not going to get near as much as you thought you were going to get for this property. So, you know, our offer is going to be reduced greatly. Our price on the market is going to be reduced greatly. But the property is going to be somewhat stigmatized now because we're going to have to get a buyer that's willing to come in and make the corrections um, required. So there you go. Uh, laugh a minute. Uh, another thing, had, had um, uh, this one uh, wholesale buyer, if you will, put contracts on two of our properties about three, four weeks ago. And they were supposed to have their um, earnest money in within the next day. As as uh, as you know, if you've been watching these videos, I've uh, prior to the last two weeks, uh, I had been trusting everyone that I work with to do what they're supposed to do. So I was taking more of a hands-off approach. Well, once I decided to get back in it and check on everything, earnest money was never uh, put up for these uh, two contracts. And this we discovered last Friday. So uh, they said Friday they dropped it off. They didn't. They said Monday they dropped it off. They didn't. They said Tuesday they dropped it off. They didn't. They actually lied and said they did things that they didn't do, not to mention the fact, how do you forget you were supposed to deposit earnest money a month ago? Uh, finally, I just told my uh, agent, uh, we're done. We're done. We're canceling the contracts, put them back on the market. Obviously, the real estate agent doesn't like that, uh, feels that we're throwing away a good prospective uh, buyer. Um, and my, uh, my thought was, how could you say that? We've got someone that didn't put the earnest money in on two different properties when they said they were going to. They told you they had dropped it off last week when they didn't. They told you they had dropped it off yesterday, which they didn't. How is it that you trust them to come to closing? Interesting, I mentioned closing. My attorney said, oh, yeah, I had a closing with those guys a month ago. It was a cash deal, small property, uh, less than $100,000 cash. I had to beg them to come to the closing table with the cash. 
they wouldn't come. They wouldn't bring the money. So when I heard that, I said, whoa, these guys are dilly-dallying with the earnest money. They're saying they delivered it when they didn't. They don't bring money to closing when they're supposed to. And with our back-to-back -back closings, we, we close on that first deal. The second buyer better be there. And we can't trust these guys. So I killed the deals. Uh, my, my realtor is all, of course, upset because he, he thinks just because you have a piece of paper with someone's signature on it, that means you have a viable deal. Well, any of us who've been in the business any length of time know that it's only a piece of paper unless the people backing that piece of paper are trustworthy. And these people have proven themselves satisfactorily enough to me not to be trustworthy. So uh, I'm not doing business with them, and that's just that. Put it back on the market, get two, two more buyers in place, and uh, move on. So that's it. Hope you're having a fantastic week. I am, and I will talk to you next week. Bye-bye.